back on Oilers Nation every day from the Seagram's VO Select Whiskey Studio. And it's the Star Mechanical Guest Line, but it's the Star Mechanical Guest Line in person. Luke Gazdick joins the show. This is fun. What's up, boys? Hello. Do I have a single? Over here? No? I, I don't kidding. know. Yeah, we already did the full thing with the cameras. Uh, Jay's also swinging by. And, uh, yeah, you got a name tag on. That's Very that's descriptive great. name tags at uh, SBX. And what are you drinking there? What do you got? Uh, well, well, this we all is got very them. interesting. Uh, Beer Santa came by. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> repping uh, chili ones, which is... Which is, it makes a lot of sense for us at Oilers Nation to talk about this. This is Tyson Berry's new beer line called mm-hmm. Chili Ones. Three percent alcohol, so ten percent charity. You can drink it on the job, crushable. which I'm go. about to do. Well, we shouldn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> we can responsibly, responsibly. We'll, we'll yeah. cut that. Yeah, we'll cut that. We'll cut that out. We're not live, right? <laughs> yeah, it's not, uh, okay. Anyway, so how you like in the city, boys? It's it's buzzing Slippery. with All Star. Yeah. Like I've been all I've been to All Stars now in Vegas and Florida, and like they were cool, really cool. But there's something different about it being in a big hockey market. Like, yeah, true. You see all the signage up yeah. everywhere and jerseys everywhere. Jerseys the city everywhere. has embraced it. I'll tell you that. Yeah, I was gonna say like for you, someone who's here every day, have yeah. you felt a bit of a shift now that it's All Star weekend? Hundred percent. I uh, I wasn't even planning on being around to be honest. I didn't have any TV obligations, so I was like, oh, I'll just kind of let the city do its thing. And then the phone just started going, man. And it was like, can you do this? Can you do this? And then I'm starting to walk around the town and they're on the buses and it's good stuff man it's uh hasn't been here since what 2000 so uh, yeah oh, really? 2000 or 02 one of the two so it's great man it's good stuff i is wouldn't my, know what it's like to host a is edmonton hosted yeah will it ever happen in yeah, it's like the 80s well, they I've heard have the, to do it soon we have this new arena i've heard they were Probably waiting until ice district was like 100 yes. percent. they want to play on the outdoor rink uh Jay, what <laughs> oh well it's up and operational now Okay. You could definitely do skills comp on there. Sure. That yeah. would be cool. Actually. Shots from the top of the Stantec Tower or something. I would love to see Edmonton get one. I know a lot of people, we've done this debate countless times on the show, but like, would you rather have your city host a draft or an all-star game? And I think from the perspective of being like a nerdy hockey fan, it's like, oh, the draft would be really cool. From the perspective, and I've been to both now, of just like the, the fun around yes. the event and the atmosphere, it's all-star and it's not even close. It's 100%. way more fun. Well, we, yeah, I don't even know what the argument is for for draft what's your it's just that the all-star cool? game doesn't mean anything oh yeah true yeah I but guess. the players are around for all-star game yeah we're still good keep rolling oh i can't hear myself yeah okay, no, no mind. but yeah the, the players are around for the all-star game so that yeah. makes it way better yeah and, and i agree too and this year i'm honestly excited for the new format as well like there's a million dollars up for grabs on the in the skills competition and even though you're Connor McDavid and you make $12 million a year, the chance to go win another mill, that's legit. It's a legit competition now. So, like, these guys are competitive guys. The, the money's secondary, but it's also cool that there is a bunch of money. But, like, these yeah. guys are going to want to win it the way it's set up. Yeah, like they need it, first and foremost. Yeah, but, throw it on the pile. Uh, no, it'll be cool, man. I'm, like, genuinely excited for it. I know uh, Kale McCarr, I think, in Colorado. who said in Colorado, but he's got, like, 100 k for each of his defensemen. Uh, oh, really? When uh, Halsey <laughs> – should I tell us? Juan Halsey made the All-Star game in, what year was that? 15? 15, something like that. What year did John Scott win MVP? 2018, wasn't it? No, I was on the oil. Oh, it, was, it was 15 oh, was or it? 16, yeah. Yeah, so two. his Pacific, that was the first year they had a million dollars for uh, the winner of the actual game. Okay. And his team, the Pacific Division, was, I mean, it's still the All-Star game, but they weren't very, like, it weren't very good. It was like John Scott, Mark Giordano, I mean, Brent Burns, Joe Pavelski, Halsey, like compared to like the Metro who had like Crosby and Ovechkin, mm, yeah. it was outrageous. So Halsey told us that uh, with his hundred grand, if they won, he would fly the entire team on a private jet anywhere we wanted to go after the season, like <laughs> not thinking anything of it. <laughs> and they went out, they won John Scott MVP and three days after the season, we chartered a jet to Vegas on his dime. It was great. Whole team? <laughs> uh, there or was close. not the whole team. Big I, plane though. Yeah, there was a number of guys. I think it was like a... 10 seater or something like that. A bunch of the married guys didn't go, like fan, guys with families didn't go. A couple guys got sent down to Oklahoma City, but we bought a, brought a nice little crew down. It was uh, it was worth it. It was awesome. Now I want first do and only time I've chartered, so it was uh, sick. Yeah, that's pretty. And I want to do some investigative reporting, see what else guys have maybe promised their teammates this year. That'd be like I'm a sure Davo has something on the line. Yeah, like 100. percent I like, he's not keeping a milli to himself. No, no. no. Yeah, that, that'll be interesting. I, I'm excited. Like, they got the fantasy draft tonight with all the captains and whatnot. We were dreaming up on DFO Live scenarios with the first overall pick, and one of them was McDavid has the first overall pick in the fantasy draft. He takes Sidney Crosby. Like, what a cool moment that would be. And you lit up. Have you heard his idea? 
I heard yesterday I was so funny how you like got it out of the way and then you're just like, oh, what like did you say? You're like, now that we know it's a dumb idea, can yeah, we let's, like debate let's see it? it through. Let's see it through. <laughs> but now you go on social media, like a lot more people are talking about, not specifically Crosby going to Edmonton, but Crosby yeah. leaving to go to a contender. I saw it this morning, actually, and I showed BM. I was like, it's happening. The Jay Andre was talking about it on his but show. But why would really? he ever? Like, what? That's what he's, I think, too. Why he's would he? But he's already won. He's already won the cups. But has he so won like, enough cups? But has like, he won more how than much Gretzky? do you need is my thing. Like, if people are like, oh, you look at, like, Ray Bork and th these guys. Like, Bork didn't win, so it's cool that he went to Colorado. But, like, Sid's already won. I don't think he's going anywhere. I also think, I know we're talking about Jen. Uh, Gensel, I think that is such. I know they probably have to do it, but that is such a slap in the face to Sid if they go through and with that and trade him. No More reason why he's got to leave. I just, I don't know. I, I could, s I would love to see it for foremost. I don't. If he's going anywhere, I, I bet you he goes to Denver and plays with Nate. Wait, oh, wait, yeah. That's which what makes, I think. I know, which makes so much sense. Like, and, and so at least now you're. Can you thinking. imagine him playing with the Avs? Now oh. I am. The wheels are. I, I know, <laughs> and, and then the more you think of it, the more you feel like it, it's like a, it could be a reality. It's not crazy town. Can you, oh. what is he? Doesn't he have two two years yeah, left? Next yeah. season, year and a half. Year and a half. Eight point seven mil. The so, the, the retool on the fly in Pittsburgh is not working. There is not going to be another Stanley Cup in Pittsburgh when Sidney Crosby's wearing that jersey. They'll give it at least one more year. You already invested in Carlson. <sighs> Dubas can't. They can't swing at it for one year. They'll give it. But at they're going to lose Gensel again. True. Like they're going to lose True. him regardless. Like he's that guy's earned his bag. Like he's going to go and get a ten million dollar deal. Yeah. Pittsburgh can't he's afford. He's earned it. every penny of it. Exactly. Too. So you said it's a slap in the face to Sid, but that's also a hell of a fit with the oil. It really is. Like a high flying. I don't know if you want to break break up Nuge. I mean, they already have. But if you could put Gensel on the top line. You could slot Leon down, make him fend for himself. You could have Connor, Leon, and Nuge one, two, three, if you wanted down the middle. I don't like Nuge as a center. Nuge you don't have Nuge to. I'm just saying now. it's an yeah. option. It's an option. Because yeah. you'd have the wing depth to support them. All. Exactly, and I think that this is a different conversation. I think if Evander had has been playing maybe a little better, scoring a little more, but um, man, he would look good in uh, copper and blue. I'll tell you that. I, I'd put him on the second line because like. Kane, Dude. Dreisaitl, Gensel. Oh, I know, cause, and then now we have two first lines, essentially. Yeah, more yeah. or less. Be hard to match against, for sure. Yeah. Um, so even when you're on the road, if a team, like we were talking about the Canucks earlier, like that Hughes and Heronic pairing can keep up with McDavid. Yeah. But if you all of a sudden have two first lines because you've went and added a big name right winger for Dreisaitl, sure, throw Hughes and Heronic out there against McDavid. Shut him down. That second yeah. line's going to kill you. So, yeah. so you'd play Leon with Gens if he got traded there? Yes. I, you know, it's not a bad idea because – I would say this. I don't know if this is a bold take, but Drysaddle plays more like Crosby than McDavid does. Slow, methodical. Slower, more methodical, loves the puck on his backhand, can possession. find you anywhere. Yeah. Uh, that's where I see the correlation. And they would be good. Like so that. where would you play Crosby, though? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Imagine Crosby, Gensel. Get him here. Uh, well, I, so the, the only reason why I don't want to do Gensel, and, it, and I, apparently I have a say in the matter. I do not. <laughs> <laughs> is he's purely a rental. He is purely a, there's no way you but can it, sign him. You after. just watched Vancouver go get a pure rental in Lindholm. Does that not that should be making Holland and Jackson their trigger finger should be getting itchy here going uh, well I hey we're, we're, we are in that all in moment. I, I get that. Like True. we talked about this earlier. Like this is like we have to push all the chips in, in the over the next two years. And like this year specifically, as many chips as we can push, push them. Mm -hmm. So if it means getting Gensel in a rental, but we need to do something else, but that just means like next year, like yeah, I think you have like to keep year? you have to keep the at least the with Crosby term you get it for of, two years <laughs> of Leon and Connor's contracts. I think you have to keep in mind it would be unreal to get someone with a little bit of flexibility in term. Yeah. Uh, we'll see though. I abs I'm not gonna lie, I absolutely love what Vancouver did and what they're doing. It drives me crazy. Oh, I'll float <laughs> like, you the Sherwood Ford giant question. Scared of them from an Oilers perspective? Well, you know what? You said it pretty well. They just added the number one probably yep. trade bait guy uh, to the team that has the best points percentage in the league. Um, you can probably move Pedersen to the left, slot Elias in the middle. You can keep that third line that's played well for them together. They're really good. They're yeah. good and they're deep, and I don't think they're done. I think that shows that they're going for it. This is real. They're going for it. I mean, they're, that's tough to play against, man. If you get past all those guys, you have one of the best goaltenders in hockey. They're making all the first moves. 
You know what? It's like, better. This is what I think about them doing, which is so smart too. I think it's unreal to make these moves earlier because then you get the guys in the lineup. You get them acc acclimated to their teammates, to the city. You get their families there if you have them. It's not this deadline acquisition where you bring them in on the day at 11.59 a.m. and they stay at, what's that extended stay hotel on Jasper called that everyone used to stay at? Right beside Cactus. Oh, Cantera. Yeah, yeah, Cantera. You're putting them up at Cantera for two, two months, whatever it's called. <laughs> Shout out Cantera. But, like, you're getting these guys here with enough time to, like, gel a little bit and get used to the system. I, I hate that I'm doing it because I've never been a Canucks guy, but, like, I just love what they're doing. I love what they've done. The top six is so good. And then, yeah, you mentioned that third line. It's like Dakota Joshua. And yeah. just guys who, who will grind you down. Yeah, so for sure. Like, you talked about getting through – that lineup and then having to deal with Demko, I even look at like, you can't have a shift off because it's either the big guns with skill in Vancouver will be on the ice or that third line is just going to grind you to a paste when they're out there. Like, yeah, they all play a certain way. Yeah. Like from covering hockey this year, it's, it's primarily been Calgary, Vancouver and the oil that I've had to cover. And it's just Vancouver is never an easy two points every night. Yeah. It's, uh, it's challenging. How much a lot of better do you think they are than Edmonton? Like, if Edmonton gets Gensel, how close is that gap all of a sudden? I still don't know. You said in a seven-game series right now, I still don't know if they're, if Vancouver's a huge favorite. I think I, I couldn't decide that either. Yeah, I, I don't know. I think they're, a P, they're like, I, you could say this for a lot of teams, but they are a piece or two away from, in my mind, being there, right there. Well, we, but like, now that Vancouver's done what it's done, and Vegas is still Vegas. Hide and in once the they weeds. get healthy, like, we, we need to give them – we need to give them those two pieces. Mm -hmm. We have to do it. Yeah. I wouldn't um, pull the trigger too quickly on, like, anything. Let this streak do what it will. Oh, yeah. Um, and then I think go from there. Can't mess with the juju right now. Don't mess with it. But, yeah, I think Lindholm is the perfect fit for them. Like, I don't think he would have been a good ranger. I don't think he would have been a good – yeah, the Avs probably missed out on him. Yeah. But there was he a lot just of talk about system. the Bruins. The Bruins just didn't have the, hoard, the, the assets yeah. to make that deal work. They yeah. went all in last year, traded everything. They don't have any prospects. Like I think they're frauds. Avs probably didn't do it because the they're Bruins. trying to get Crosby. <laughs> I mean, I did cat food last year because of the Bruins, so I'm kind of <laughs> done writing them off. I'm over that. I should start respecting them. because. Did, yeah. did you see that crazy stat that if the Oilers won every single game the rest of the season, they still wouldn't match the total that the Bruins had last season? Yeah. That is insane. They would be two points off. That run they had last wow. year is Nuts. just stupid. Yeah. And they're on pace to win the President's Trophy again this year. Tied with Vancouver in points percentage. I just yeah. don't think they're coming out of the... Well, I don't like I their don't center they're coming out the Well, Atlantic. wait till Patrice Bergeron comes out of retirement. <laughs> oh, I think he shot that down. Like the Undertaker just comes out of friggin' I don't know. nowhere. We'll see. Uh, you were talking about not messing with the juju. That ties in a little bit to the Cody CC debate and the idea of upgrading him. The point I've made when it's like, hey, CC, can you get Walker? Can you get Alex Carrier out of Nashville? To me, it's like, okay, even if you believe those are marginal upgrades, is it worth disrupting the chemistry you have on that back end? Nurse and CC have played together so much over the last couple of years that you know what you, it's the devil you know. I, that's not exactly the best line to use in this, but what do you make of the idea of upgrading CC? Is it something they should be looking to do? Is it one of those things where it's like, no, you know what you have with this blue line? Yeah. It kind of works. I, I struggle with this because of the fact that I think I've played and been in the room and I understand like how close you get during the year. I was, v I don't want to say very against it last year with Ekholm, but I I'm very skeptical of moving yeah. Tice. Like I, I didn't, I knew that that probably had to happen if they wanted to bring in someone like that, but I didn't love it at the time. I didn't love it at the moment. And I've just seen how much it benefited them. Uh, if you're going to go out and trade Cease, which is a possibility, you better be damn sure that what you're getting in return is a major, is, is a major upgrade. That's my whole thing. Cause I, I don't, I think he's given you a lot of good serviceable minutes. At I think 3.25 million. million. I think he's been a hell of a defenseman for them. And I, that wasn't something you could always say. Uh, mm -hmm. He's turned into a guy that I think under good coaching and um, some good structure has really been a good player for them. So that's my thing is you just better be sure that whoever you're getting is a really good defenseman and a big upgrade. Well, and you have to think about Darnell Nurse too, right, in that equation. Like, they're now welded together, right? Yeah. Like they are yeah. symbiotic. They are one. Uh, so, like, it has to be a major upgrade because that in itself, like, can be, mat like, crazily disruptive. Yeah. 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 Everyone talks about Sean Walker, and I think he's having a good year. But, like, what's the difference going to be? 
that much, right? If you bring in a Sean Walker to replace Casey. And I'm, I'm kind yeah. of game to bring in Sean Walker as Me a too. depth ad. Yeah. But then it's kind of like, okay, what if Philly wants a second round pick and a prospect? And it's like, okay, do you really want to give that up for just your depth defensive ad? Like, that's kind of where I'm torn on it. Like, adding a right winger, whether it's Gensel, you guys know I'm big on Tyler Toffoli. I'm, I, hoping, I'm with you. I want yeah. the Devils to lose 10 straight games That's and so become sellers. That's so interesting. the Devils Sidney Crosby, yeah. Toffoli. One, two. I, I would take – I might take Toffoli over Gensel if they're both on the market. I love that right shot. He's such a pro too. Yes. Playoff one. guy. I don't know. The, I don't know what the hell the Devils are doing, man. Go get a goalie. Honestly, they should have done it a long time ago. But mm. if they keep tanking, I would – yeah, I would love that. If there's any team that should be calling Nashville every day for sorrows – Probably the Devils. Or the Toronto Maple Leafs. Or Carolina, second in the league, second worst in the league in save percentage. What about the Oilers and a goalie? Oh, man. This is my thing. rumbling? Yeah, I've heard it. This is my thing, too, is I understand. So now it's an insurance policy. Like, Stu's the guy. Mm -hmm. Now it's more of an insurance policy. Like, knock on what anything ever happened. But same thing with Pick. It's been, like, a really short sample size. But how much better does someone – is someone going to give you than Pick has given the team already? 915. Like, how much better is someone going to come in? And I also don't really want to mess with, like, Stu's juju. Like, I, I don't know if that's great for his confidence to maybe bring in someone that shows, you know, we're not exactly 100% invested in you. Or, you know, you bring in someone and, and you're basically doing an insurance policy. But I don't know. I don't know who – I think Pick's been really good. He, I think yeah. he's earned the opportunity to at yeah. least give them a shot as their backup. Uh, and like you said, like the mojo that they've built. Like yeah. Pickard's more than fine with just sitting on the bench for like 10 days and letting Skinner do his thing. Like if you bring in like a Flory, for example, you, you can gotta call play it competition, but is it healthy competition? Like what if it kind of disrupts Skinner and everything? Like I think this team's fine between the pipes. I wouldn't change anything. I, I, like I think the assets are better spent on the roster versus yep. the goaltender. Yeah. That's where I'm at. I would agree. They almost have too many holes, which is strange to say for a team on a 16-game win streak, mm-hmm. to even worry about the goaltender anymore. Right? No. Yeah. We've been winning low-scoring good games. We've only seen Corey Perry for one game, but what, have, what did you make of him in his debut against he Nashville? He looked good, man. He looked like Corey Perry. Kind of added. <laughs> he looked I, like I, Corey he Perry. Like, <laughs> like around the net, 10 feet around the net, in the crease, on the boards. He's impossible to get the puck off of. Uh, he is going to be amazing for the invisible PP2 that they have if it gets yeah. any time. 22nd line. <laughs> yeah. It'll be a good 20 seconds. It'll be the yeah. best 20 second <laughs> PP2. Uh, it's, it's a great ad, honestly. He, he looked good. I thought he was going to score. Uh, I'm sure that'll come, but he looked like Corey Perry. I, it shocks me how old he is because he yeah. still is a very, very good hockey just player. Just smart play. Obviously, he's got, the, he's got high-end skills, but like just smart. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Doesn't move well, but I think Doesn't the smarts and hands kind of make up for it. Like 100%. that drop pass he made to Holloway when he put it Holloway through the Holloway didn't even realize it was Stick coming. on the ice yeah. still. In. <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> like, you're, you're playing with Corey Perry. Like It's like it's like David Drysdale. Stick on the ice, and he'll yeah. find you. He knows now. He'll yeah. find Yeah, he learned. Although I hate when people look at like players coming back from injury or like a prospect and they go, like, oh, it's kind of like a deadline ad. And I know that was kind of the narrative with Holloway, but he's come back up and looked. He, he looks different. He looked good that game against Seattle. Then he got hurt the next night. Yeah. But he's come back in these three games since they recalled him. He's dynamite. He's yeah. making no, like yeah. confident plays with the puck. He looks really good. That's a, almost an X factor, man. It's it's someone who can step in the lineup, provide you some great energy. To me, he still doesn't look that confident. Like he still looks like he's finding his feet. And I think once he gets there and feels like he's part of the lineup and feels like he's part of the team, he's just going to get better. Play him with pairs. Get an older yes. guy on their line. Um, just. Like I said, have your stick on the ice. Yeah, Perry will get you a few goals. He'll <laughs> get be the right. confidence going. Yeah, I don't know who they'll slot with him. It was McLeod, right, yeah. before? Uh, man, that's a f- – <laughs> I was going to say it's a fast line, but CP doesn't skate as <laughs> fast as those two. It's just a great line, honestly. That gives you some depth. And what it, it's like adding – yeah, it's like yeah. adding a deadline acquisition, but in uh, in February. It's and great. gives them a little bit of you know time and space, too, because Corey Perry is not afraid. Uh, and is willing to be tenacious, so like it helps out young guys like that too, right? Yeah, a little bit of toughness. I like that, man. A yeah. little bit of jam, a little bit of grit. You know, he's going to stick up for the for the young yeah. guys if he has to. In that first period against Nashville, he had that first scrum. Yeah, and he's the king of like he goes to the net, he jabs a guy, and then when he gets pushed, he almost has that look on his face, like what I didn't do. What, yeah, I like, didn't what am do I doing wrong? <laughs> Did you have any battles with it when you played? No, I. As you were telling that, I always like 
refer to questions by stories and I'm like trying to think I'm like did I have any and no he but he did the exact same thing one night and it was just like the subtle behind the knee <laughs> it was like a push and I fell like all the way back and he turned around and he had like moved to the other end of the scrum I was just like <laughs> man this guy's such a rat he's like six <laughs> four and the biggest rat uh, but he's our rat one now. of those guys that exactly you love to have on your team hate to play against them yeah totally um, I know you want to talk about this, but just as we get closer to the deadline, your deadline experiences, being in an NHL locker room, like how tense is it in the week leading up? Like when you have teammates who maybe they've heard their name out there a little yeah. bit and stuff, like how delicate of a subject is it? So I think the weirdest one was my rookie year in Edmonton because I'd never experienced it. And I think I just got numb to it after that in my, what, four years in the league. But the first year it was crazy just because we had, I think there were higher expectations for the team than we actually did performed by that time we were you know way out of the playoffs so they were talking about everyone from like here we go we throw back names ryan jones like ryan smith i think like sure. even anton freaking belov like uh yeah. it was just yeah, everybody like everyone that either had an expiring deal or whatever first of all didn't even practice that day so like we walked in that morning and you know you have all your jerseys hung up in the stalls according to color and there was like 10 guys not skating so i'm like oh my god like they are <laughs> selling the house like this is crazy we're gonna trade like eight guys and nothing ended. I don't even think anything ended up happening I have to look back and see but then we had heard all the rumors even for the young guys from like yak to Eberly like we had heard so many different things and it's not like we, we were sitting there refreshing Twitter but Edmonton's so small right you just start yeah, you start yeah. talking to mm -hmm. one guy and another guy and then you turn on the radio and it's like oh this guy's getting traded for whoever so no, the deadline passed. We were at the rink and we were stretching after, and the deadline had passed, and not a lot had happened. And I can tell you, like, there, there were guys that were pissed that they did not get traded. <laughs> Some of the vets, yeah. Yeah, there were a couple guys that were sure, 100% sure they were heading out of town, bags packed, tell the wife we're, we're gone, and they did not go. And it's a pretty miserable next couple months to have guys like that on your team and we didn't have a great dressing room after that to be honest but it was it was just weird I, I don't know it was it was my first experience at it just a lot of not knowing and yeah the whole like n didn't even practice make sure they're staying staying uh, not injured uh, it was definitely an experience I was not going anywhere put it that way so <laughs> I knew good. I was good you're never sweating <laughs> no I was never worried about a Bob McKenzie tweet gas dick for a Sixth no, or <laughs> no. Thankfully, Mac T had called me like two weeks before that, I think, and offered a two-year extension, and I was the happiest man on the planet. So it was, I think it was his way of like I don't think I was getting traded anywhere regardless, but it was his way of being like, hey, I know there's a lot of uncertainties around here. We want to we want to keep you in this thing for the long haul. How does two years sound? And I was just like, send it now. We don't need my agent. <laughs> Send it over here. I'll print it off and drive it back to your office, bud. Oh, that's good. Um, so, yeah, we still got a month and seven days coming up until the deadline. So we'll see what the Oilers, uh, see what they get up to. There's a little bit of talk today about Henrik. I think that would be an interesting name, the Henrik Monahan thing. But I don't know. I, don't, I like Rico to, uh, I think he fits in in Winnipeg really well. Um, yeah, and like I know that, that sucks to hear as a Oiler fan, but I think he fits in really well in Winnipeg. Monty's almost better. I just never, I'm just going to say it, I never liked seeing like old Flames guys. Yeah. Do you know? Like, yeah. I don't Amen. know if that's like so yeah. petty of me. No, but also, but it, like the whole Lindholm thing that I was hearing, I was like, first of all, you guys know that there is a very unwritten rule between the two organizations that there isn't a lot of trades that go down. I think it's seven all time. Mm, yeah, Neil Ferlucci. Sort of I awesome. remember when Laddie Smee got traded. Yeah, he was, was that hurt my heart. He was stunned, stunned. So he came in and was like, "Boys, I, I honestly can't believe it." Like. He, and I remember asking him, what, like, that you got traded. He said, no, not that I got traded, that, that it's Calgary. He's like, we were told when he was younger that you don't get traded to Calgary. So, like, when I was hearing all this Lindholm stuff, I was like, they are going to have to pay to get him. But I don't know. Flames guys just always look weird. I know. Playing for the oil. But Monaghan scoring, like, a big playoff goal. Time, a lot of time has passed, and he would be unreal. I'm very surprised that Kent Hughes hasn't traded him yet. With the injury history, I would be... Yeah, calling every team in the league yeah. and selling high right now. Like, if I don't know what's on the table, but if they have a, f a first rounder on the table for him right now and they hadn't traded him already, I would be shocked.
yeah. shocked. Also, but. like a big credit to Monaghan too, because he looked like he was going. Looks like his career nowhere, was over. right? So he lives like 15 minutes down the road. He's in a Tobacco. I've known him for probably a decade. Man, he has been through it and back. Yeah. Like every part of his body, not just injured, I'm talking surgery, like at both ankles, both hips, both shoulders, cool. elbow, concussions. He has been through it all. And I know he's not like the most charismatic guy, but he grinds. He just puts his yeah. head down and he's just such a pro, man. He would be really, really good for the team. Yeah, that'd be the perfect 3C to slot in. Move McLeod to the wing where he's been a little bit more productive. Yeah, it'd be, it would be a dream fit. I'm nervous about giving up a first-round pick for a guy like that. But, again, if you're all in, Jay. Well, and well, if you win, it's a 30-second overall pick. Yeah, it's basically a second. There you True. go. Well, and Luke asked a question earlier. You know, how many cups do you want to win? And my question is, how many NBA titles did Michael Jordan want? <laughs> Sidney Crosby is of the same mindset. <laughs> yeah. He wants to stack them up. I think that's what you have to continue to look at is what I said. You know, the length of Connor and Leon's deals. Yeah. Keep that in mind, right? Yeah. I, two year window, like right. Because you're not, you're right. You're not trying to win one. You're trying to win two. You're trying to win three with these guys. Mm -hmm. you're, we owe it to them. You know, it's, 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 this isn't a one and done sell the farm for one and, you know, keep your fan base happy. Like you have two of the five, two, maybe two of the three best players in the world. You should be up for it every year. Yeah. Luke, really appreciate you swinging by. It was really fun doing this in person. Yeah. Anytime, boys. All right. Anytime. Uh, Luke Gazik on the Star Mechanical guest line, Edmonton's number one plumbing and heating company. We're going to step aside for a quick bake break. Ooh, come back, wrap quick up the bake. show.